All right, folks, here we are. 138 MMA Trivia Night, the first ever episode. We've got Eric Betts Fights and Guru Scouting MMA as our contestants tonight in a head-to-head showdown. A battle for the ages, a battle of wits, a battle of knowledge, a battle of skill, a battle of, uh, I don't know, whatever else you can put on there. Well, we're going to go over the rules really quick, and then we're going to go into the the game. So I'm going to just read them as I typed them all out earlier. But essentially, the rules are as follows. The contestant who goes first will be just I did in an arbitrary way, which I already have figured out. Are saying good. Are we back? Am I back? We're back? Yes. Yes. That was not good. <laughs> Are we, what's okay, happened? we're good, right? Are we, can we hear me? I think so. I can okay. hear you. We're back. That was not good. I don't know what happened there. Okay, we're, we're back. Okay, so where we left off, we're picking, we're going we're gonna to start. Hopefully, we don't lose connection again. That was rough. Um, you know what? I'm just going to shut the other laptop over here that's trying to run stuff um so we'll pick our who's gonna start uh the contestant who one sec oh we are struggling here boys we are struggling give me a we moment I'll tell you what, give me a moment start. somebody i might, I might drop out one the, you got you got to cue the jeopardy music dude <laughs> eric good to see you man yeah it's really good to see you too what you been up to? You all right? Yeah, man. Just working, doing my thing. Haven't been on YouTube in over a year now, probably. So, yeah, it's good. I was a little nervous to be here, but it feels good. Yeah, I mean, it c- couldn't go any worse, technically. So, like, and we and you survive. We're surviving. So, yeah, uh, well, I, I bet that's <laughs> that makes it even better. You got to have a little spice in it. You know, it wouldn't be any fun if the first one just went off without a hitch, right? No, absolutely. Listen, we're working out the bugs. Okay. That's why it's a pilot episode. That's right. Hopefully we get no more bugs. I think sharing the screen and having everyone on is a little tough, uh, but we're going to see. Uh, we're upgrading the Wi-Fi soon, but we don't have it yet. Anyway, so anyway, the contestants, whoever gets to go first, is essentially going to answer questions until they get one wrong. Once they get one wrong, the other contestant gets the opportunity to steal that question. If they steal that question, they get the points. If they don't steal that question, it is still their turn, so it doesn't count against them. Then they get to go until they miss one. Okay, Uh, so after that, um, we already covered that. So, okay, the game comes to an end when every question on the board that is not a thousand dollar question is is clear. Or if one contestant decides to forfeit, if they've reached a point where the it is mathematically impossible for them to win. So if they reach that point, it's whatever. Uh, Uh, So the thousand dollar question. (laughs) Yeah, the the thousand. $1 $1 questions do not have to be it. answered, but you can. You can use them to get a big lead. Yeah, if you get it's a it's a it's a like a mercy stoppage. If that is if there that a happens. double jeopardy somewhere in there? Is there a daily there's no double, double jeopardy? There? We got I oh, I was gonna do that, but that Ooh. made it really convoluted. I do appreciate the the like the enthusiasm for the double jeopardy though. <laughs> um, qu- questions will have a time limit, but the time limit that's built into the game is just a little bit quick uh, for what we're doing. So we're gonna. We're going to adjust accordingly. I'm not going to actually hold everybody to that. For like maybe the $100 questions, we might. Um, and the chat is welcome to, you know, participate, say some fun stuff. But, the but you know, we don't want them giving away answers, right? So uh, so that'd be ideal if that's not done. So chat knows what's up. Um, there, Eric, when did you start yeah, watching the uh, UFC? Uh, with UFC 2, yeah. I Rented oh, nice. on VHS, but but you got. I know. I know you keep saying I'm going to kick your ass, Greg. Here's the thing, though. I don't remember shit about the UFC after like 2005. I know a lot about the early days, and I'm not as good on the newer stuff. So, That's so <laughs> funny. We know the old school is going to be is going to be your question. It is going to be your uh, your question category then. Um, I just, okay, so I just yeah, I remember that about him when we uh, when we had him on the show. He's an all Eric's an awesome guy, so I'm happy to be doing this. 
My guess is that you guys are both going to struggle a, a lot past <laughs> $300 because those questions get really tough because I'm an idiot. But it's okay. We're going to have a fun time. Everybody in the chat's going to have a fun time. I know Daz is excited for this because Daz was saying how much he was looking forward to the trivia, so that's good. Um, so here's how we're going to decide uh, who goes first, okay? It's whoever can guess closest – without going over, hopefully without going over, to the number of views currently on my most recent upload, not including this this live stream. Go. I'm going to go with 69. Okay. 70. Okay, Eric gets to go first. <laughs> I, played, I played the game. <laughs> that was smart. That was a really, that was a really good guess. Um, it was like oh, 300 nice. some odd for my live stream on on yeah, Tuesday. So there you so go. Close. Nice move. That was, that was a good guess. Okay. So that means Eric gets to go first. Now here's the, here's the, uh, I, I told everybody in the back, the problem for the, for a chat guys, if I'm not engaging with the chat, I apologize. I can't see the chat at the same time as I have the board pulled up. So everybody bear with me on that, but I'm going to try to pop back in. I appreciate all you guys coming out. Um, but have fun chatting anyway. Okay. So Eric, for your first question, you Let's see. I believe there we go. You get to go first, so you get to pick any category you like and what dollar amount. What would you like? You know, I was going to start at the bottom, but you told me that they're pretty hard at the bottom, so we'll 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 ease into it. I'll start with old school for one hundred. Old school for one hundred. Okay. So your question. Oh, yeah. definitely mute the music. Okay, that's going to be annoying. <laughs> okay, so your question. Who were the fighters in the first fight ever in UFC history? Oh my God. Uh, well, it, I think. Well, I think the first. Yeah, I think it was uh, Gerard Gordo and Tila Tuli. Yeah. Dude, you nailed it! Fantastic job. Um, I believe it gives me the answer right here. Maybe one second. Yes, it does. There we go. And so that gives you a hundred. Oh, there's an easier way to do that. There you go. So you nailed that one. Fantastic effort. For Eric. Now, you got yourself on the board. It's a good, it was a good first one. What would you like for your second question? Same category 200, please. Let's keep going down. He's rolling on up. Okay. What network was the first to broadcast a UFC event? A full UFC event? Uh, probably... yeah, I suppose so, yeah. Oh, I don't remember. I'm going to say Spike, but I don't think that's right. Mm, that is incorrect. Oh. Guru, would you like to steal? That's interesting because that definitely would have been my guess. Um, oh. So I don't get a penalty for stealing, right? So obviously – No, yeah. So there's this one's just a free free answer. If you miss it, it's yeah, not a big so deal. I, yeah, I'm going I'm to give it a go. Uh, so you mean first network like – like Who a, broadcast a, an event first? A, a cable, like a cable network? That's so weird. Any network? Obviously, it wasn't Fox. I guess if it wasn't Sp uh, C like CBS, CBS. I have no idea. It's a good guess. No, so actually, the answer is SEG. SEG was the first network. They <laughs> are didn't even know if they were a network. I couldn't tell you what it stands for off the top of my head. It, it stands for Semaphore Entertainment Group. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Yep. They were a network at the time. They were the first one to broadcast it. it. And there is that. HBO? Daz says it was HBO. Are you sure, Daz? I'm pretty sure I looked this up. Da Let me know in the chat, Daz, if, the, if that's correct. If you're 100% correct on it, Google that. Um, but if so, we still all got it wrong. Um, never heard of them. Okay. Uh, so, Guru, you going to take a choice? What would you All like right. for your first category and number? I'm going to go with the $1,000 question for $500. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> that should get me $500,000. <laughs> no, no. That's okay, I, what that means, right? We blitzed out a minute. What was that? I'm going to take the $5,000 question for $500. Okay, one more time. Question. Sorry, I lost you for a second. What was that? <laughs> the thousand thousand dollar question for five hundred dollars. Thousand dollar question. Oh, okay. So yeah, I didn't explain the thousand dollar questions. I'm sorry, I didn't explain that. So to get your thousand uh, um, dollar, 
So each of these are worth a thousand dollars, but it's so the top one is just general. So you pick, basically pick a category. It'll be general knowledge, old school, one for the record books, belt lineages, uh, or I mean outside the USC and then belt lineages. So yeah, I'm so, so, yeah, so you pick so one of the regular categories for that. Not a, that so a thousand dollar question is not a category. Okay. It's not a category. Oh. All of these are, it wouldn't let me change the dollar amount. So I have to manually go in and add the money. That was my right. fault. Cool. Belt lineage for $500. Belt lineage for five. Okay. But you can, you can pick the thousand for belt lineage if you want. Are you stick with five? There's, I, what do you mean? I thought there's only a hundred is a hundred, 200, 300, 400 and 500. No. Okay. So like, so what's a, what's a thousand? Okay, so ignore. So let me let me try this again. So ignore all of the dollar figures on the thousand dollar questions, though. So like, each thousand dollar question is a thousand. So all of the like, in, if it says 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, all of those are a thousand. Ignore that. But like, it's basically adding an extra number to all the others. So if you want a thousand dollar belt lineage, we can do that. I understand. Yes. I understand. You have it's a it's a column, and you'd prefer it as a row, but it is what it is. Got it. Yes, but it won't let me make now yeah, that. There I you go. That's a better way of explaining it. Now I understand exactly what it's supposed to be. Okay, cool. Perfect. Let me do. I asked for something that made no sense. That's really funny. Let's do belt lineage for a thousand dollars. Belt lineage for a thousand. Okay, belt lineage is sure. the fifth category. So that means we are at this one here. Okay, belt lineage for a thousand. Here we are. Name the two shortest title reigns in UFC history that also happen to be the inaugural champion of their weight class. This does not count tournament era. Who is it and what weight class? I guess you don't have to necessarily oh, name the weight class, but. Mon Montana. Montana was the one of them, the chick. What was that? Uh, uh, fucking straw weight, maybe? Or, or fly weight? I, I don't I don't fucking know. And then the other one I know, and I am too much of a uh, uh, <laughs> enjoyer of some of my time to remember. Who was the other one? Um, fuck. That's going to really, really piss me off. God damn it. Um Somebody just put the fuck. Nope. Don't know. I guess I'll give up. It's like okay. I, and... Without asking, for, without asking for a hint, I can't. I can't do it. Ugh. A hint? Oh, um. No, I can't ask for a hint, right? No. <laughs> I can't give you a hint. I can't do it. Yeah, I know. Can't do it's it. It's all good. Give it. Okay. Give it to Eric. Eric. So Eric's inviting it to. All right. Eric knows it. Give it to Eric. Eric, what do you got? I'm not positive if I know it. I do think Nico Montano is probably one of them. And I'm going to guess 100%. the other one is Carla Esparza. Oh, yeah. Okay. Right. Is that your final guess? Yeah. That means I'm wrong. Okay. So you were really close. You were really close. You got one of them. Nico Montano is not one of them. Believe oh. it or not. What? Carla Esparza, strawweight, and Dave Manet, <laughs> middleweight <laughs> champion. <laughs> I would never have got Dave Manet. So uh, Nico enough. Montano was just a little bit longer than both of them, somehow. Dave Manet, I've never even heard of him. So there we go. It was a, it was a good effort, valiant effort. Guru going for the for the hard one right out of the gate, full bore. Yeah, I love the effort, but it didn't pay off. And Eric's back on deck. <laughs> and hopefully right. we don't lose connection again because that's. Well. Eric, so, what, what would you like for your choice? Well, we already got Dave Manet out of the way, so I know who was the first middleweight champion isn't coming up. I would have been all over that one, but uh, let's do yeah, – let's just do there old school go. for 300. Let's do old school 300. Old school for three. Okay. So here we go. Who stepped in as an alternate to compete only in the finals of UFC 3 and then go on to win that matchup and then tournament? That was former Omaha, Nebraska police officer, Steve Jenham. Dude, Steve you Jenham. nailed it. How, yeah. how could I not put an Omaha fella 
on uh, <laughs> on the list being from Omaha. Steve Jen, the man. And here we go. Look at Incredible. that. He okay, was also the game is still won, wasn't he? close. We're still attainable here. Jenum, no, that was his first com- uh, attempt. Was um, UFC three? Fuck. So yeah, yeah, yeah. but there you go. Mm. That was, that, I mean, that was a good like attempt at an added added one. I like it. Uh, Eric, you're on a roll. You're at four hundred dollars. Goody, you're only a little ways behind. You can still catch up with a single question. Eric, what do you want? Four hundred. Same category. Yeah. We'll do it. All right, here we go. Who did Tank Abbott attempt to throw over the top of the octagon at UFC 11.5? Uh, I'm pretty sure it was Steve Melmark. Mm, that is incorrect. Oh, no! I, uh, Who, crap. <laughs> Who did Tank Abbott attempt to throw over the top of the octagon at UFC 11.5? I don't know. Mark Coleman? I, I don't know. I think I know who it was now. It was a valiant effort. Eric, what was your second guess? It doesn't count, but what was your second guess? Actually, I think I'm wrong. I was going to say John Matua, but I don't think it was. No, that was at USC. No, Never, mind. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. Cal Warsham <laughs> was the man. <laughs> Cal Warsham. Yep. That is the one. However, that's a change of, of, uh, of the guard here. We've got Guru now in control guru what category would you like what dollar amount let's go with one for the record books for a thousand oh jesus brother okay (laughs) one for the record books for a thousand okay who has the best significant strike defensive percentage in UFC history with a minimum of five UFC fights and a minimum of 350 strikes attempted against? Amin Zahabi. That is incorrect. I got to make sure I remember who that is, but it is incorrect. Yes. Okay. okay. Eric, you can steal this. Who has, a, has the best striking de- – defense percentage in the UFC history, a minimum of five UFC fights and 350 strikes attempted against Eric. What is your answer? Oh gosh. I, I, I feel like this is a weird one. I feel like it's set. I can't think of his name. Uh, but, 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 I'm probably wrong anyway, but ah, if it's a guy I'm thinking of, he was a heavyweight wrestler from tough and his name was like John Madden or something like that. But I, I can't remember his name. And I'm wrong anyway, so I give up. Are you sure you don't want to try that again a little bit more? Yeah, because I can't remember his name. Uh, uh, I want to give you points for that so freaking bad. (laughs) John, he's from Minnesota. I wish I could. I can't remember his name. John John Madsen. It's John Madsen. (laughs) At the buzzer, he gets it. But uh, what's his what's his percentage? Uh, off the top of my head, let's see. Uh, I think I had it written down somewhere. I don't have it written down. For whatever reason, I didn't write that down. I wrote down because all the others, but I didn't write that one. Eamon Zahabi, for point. what it's worth, if anybody is laughing at me, Eamon Zahabi's stri- significant striking defense is 79%. Yeah, this guy's was like ridiculous. That's it was like, like in the 80s. Something. It's like 89. Yeah, it's 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 crazy. Is it? Yeah. yeah. It's yeah, it's absolutely ridiculous. Because he just like mauls everybody, basically. And just like doesn't get hit. So so we saying he got it on the buzzer? He did. I, I would say so. Okay, Guru's vouching for it. It's it. It's in. Okay. <laughs> that was the wrong way. <laughs> well, that sound is miserable. Okay. All right. We got it. So he stole successfully got a thousand dollar question. I thought nobody was gonna get yeah. those. That is impressive as all get out. Eric, wow. you are you're very good at trivia. This is scary. No, um, it was part, I well, I remember again. I, I love Eric. I had him on the show. Nice guy. I remember talking to him. And he was his knowledge of the UFC and history knowledge of the UFC was incredible. It was one of the things when he was tweeting a lot, it was one of the things he was tweeting. I remember that too. So he's always got the throwback shirts. This is, I knew I was going to get crushed when it was him on. I, if it was anybody else, I thought I'd have a decent chance. You but still have a the, chance. Not the, not the almanac here. <laughs> Dude, this is so crazy. Cause it, it's funny. Cause when I was asking people like who should be on both of you two were brought up a couple of times, Eric was brought up like three or four times. But Guru was brought up a couple of times. Um, TB also said Guru for sure. So that (laughs) makes sense. But um, 
so we move on. Uh, Eric Stoll. Eric gets to, to make a selection. What would you like, Eric? Uh, let's do old school 500. Old school for five. Keeping it simple, just moving down the line. I love it. Okay, so the question is, gloves have not always been required in the UFC. Who was the first fighter to choose to wear MMA-style gloves before they were required? Well, Art Jimerson wore one glove, but that was a boxing glove. I'm pretty sure it was Tank Abbott. Tank Abbott. Okay. That is incorrect. Tank Abbott came a little bit later. Guru, you have a chance to steal. With that, give uh, me some initials. Question. Gloves have not give always been in the I, UFC. Yep. Give me, give me some initials on his name. Give me, give me a hint. Give me something. Okay. Um, I'll give you initials. MB. Okay, I know it now. <laughs> yep. Um, Marlon Brando. I have, I have no idea. That was a good try. That was a good try. No, uh, the answer is it's Melton, Melton Bowen. Bowen at UFC 4. Yes, Melton Bowen yes. was the first one. I've, I've never seen that. I've never even watched that event. Really? You've never watched that? No. You haven't seen all the old ones, huh? No. Wow. Okay, you're going to have a trouble with – I guess the old school rules is over. So, like, I mean, I guess there's just a thousand. So, you don't really have to worry too much now. Um we should That's hit that a shame. Some quick. of those are really fun. Uh, for the old school? Yeah, we should just. Or for we what? Should just clear, we should just clear them out for a thousand. We should just clear it. Let's do it. Clear it old school. Okay, old school rules for a thousand. Here we go. Guru's question: Old school. What was the first submission hold to successfully secure a win in the UFC? This does not include Art Jimerson tapping from being in guard, as no hold was applied, and he just didn't know what the hell was going on. Um, the first submission the, hold. You don't have to know who did it or anything. I'm gonna go with a rear naked choke. I thought it was maybe maybe it was Gracie in UFC one, but I, I don't know. Was it a gee choke? A solid a choke? guess. No, a gee, gee choke. I don't know what the fuck you did. It was a solid maybe guess, but it wasn't quite right. Eric, I'm shocked. Do you have a guess? That was gonna be my guess too, but let me think. Let me think. Okay, because. Gracie tapped out Gerard Gordeau with a rear naked choke in UFC one, I think. But uh, was it a was it a? Is it technically when he knocks his tooth out with the kick and he's a, <laughs> he submits to? No, his that, is, that was a knockout. We're counting that as a knockout. Okay, okay. I was this is the first submission hold, so it's an let's actual say, hold. Let's say I'm gonna. I, I'm, I'm trying to remember. If, I'm trying to remember if Shamrock Pat Smith was UFC one. I can't remember. I'm going to go with that. And it, it was a, I suppose it was a, you're going to go with it what? Was an Achilles, I suppose it was an Achilles lock. I don't, I don't know if I'm going to say Achilles lock. Oh God. This is another one. I want, uh, I want to give you credit, but I, <laughs> you got, okay. Well, you've got to give him credit. What, it might have been, you have it might been a heel hook. I don't know. <laughs> it was a heel hook. It was officially a heel hook over Pat Smith. Oh, that, shit. Dude, you're too good at this. I'm going to give you half credit on that one. That's so wow. freaking good. You got to give him full credit. Unreal. Like, I can Absolutely picture it in my unreal, head. I just Eric. wasn't sure for sure which lock it was exactly. I was like, he I know gets, which he gets it. <laughs> I thought there was no chance anybody was going to get that. I got to look at the that chat did, real quick. I had that to turn fight off did happen was, first. Wow. Yeah, yeah that, that was, like, pretty quick. Yep, there you go. Uh, Ryan Jordan in the chat said heel hook as well. Yep, yep. That's hilarious. Damn. My goodness, that is that is something impressive that, that you actually even like guessed anything like that. you guessed it was like an ankle of any sort. Okay, Eric, you're insane. This is really good. You, you are next up. What would you? What are you looking at? Let's do one for the record books for one hundred. One for the record books for one hundred. Okay. Who holds the record for both most fights and most wins in UFC history? That would be none other than A-10, Jim Miller. Brother, you crushed that one. Absolute savage right there, Jim Miller. We're moving right along. What would you like next, Eric? 200. Let's keep it rolling. Keep it rolling. He loves the sequential. I, I like it too. Which fighter with at least five fights – 
has the shortest average fight time in the UFC? There are technically two answers I will accept for this one. And they both just fought each other not long ago. But I, if I'm thinking, of the, I think it's Tom Aspinall. Brother, you nailed it again. Savage. Savage. Uh, Pat Smith was also acceptable, oh. but he's pre-modern era, and I didn't specify it in the question, so there is that. Well done. Um, what would you like next? Uh, let's do general knowledge for 100 just to mix it up. Okay, he's getting wild. All right. General knowledge. Which city has hosted the most UFC events? You better get this one. I'm I'm sitting in this city right now. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's Vegas. Got to be. <laughs> yeah. Definitely Vegas. I was like, what city is he in right now? I don't know. <laughs> there you go. Las Vegas it is. Easy one. All right. What is next for you, Eric? Let's do general knowledge 500. You are general knowledge 500. You are a savage man. We'll see if we can get it. General knowledge 500. Which UFC event had the highest percentage of underdogs win? Which UFC mm. event? So we're looking for the specific event that it is. I... I'm pretty sure I remember the event. I mean, I don't know the name of it or anything, but I'm pretty sure. Oh, I'm pretty sure it was the no event. No guess. Where Frank. Uh, let, let me think. I, I mean, I I don't know the number. I'm pretty sure it was the night that Frankie Signs beat Ilya Kantara, Alcantara, but I could be wrong. And somebody made a ton of money because they bet on like eight underdogs in a parlay. I don't. Yeah, I don't know what event it was though. Uh, okay. And he is passing. Guru, would you like to take a stab? Uh, no, <laughs> there's 500 events. No. I'm going to, I'm going to say it was, I don't know, within the last 10 years though. So that's what I got. Okay. You want to just throw a number out and guess? You, so you're saying it was a pay-per-view. Uh, let's Not go. Not necessarily. <laughs> so, uh, whatever. I'm going to go with 161. You'll see 160. No. Okay. So good guess. I like the, I like the attempt. It was actually... UFC Fight Night 61, 10 of 11 underdogs won. The only favorite to win was Ivan George or Ivan Jorge, whatever you want to go with. And he won the first fight of the night. From after the first fight on, it was nothing but dogs barking, which is absolutely insane. Can you imagine if we had a card like that nowadays? That'd be brutal. We've got like 30 people watching. This is a blast. Uh, Guru, you are now up. What category would you like and what dollar figure? Uh, let's go with belt lineage for a hundred. Okay. I like it. He's going to an uncharted category. Here we go. Belt lineage for 100. Who is the youngest fighter to ever be a champion in the UFC? We'll go with John Jones. Brother, you got one. You're on the board. Guru. Look at that. John Jones, Johnny Bones. He is now on a roll on a hot streak is Guru. What do you got next? I'll go with, uh, same category, 200. There you go. He's pulling with the air strategy. I like this. Just go go down. All right. Who was the first Canadian UFC champion? We'll go with uh, George St. Pierre. Mm, not quite. Not quite. Eric, uh, would you like to steal this one? I'm sure you shot my load too fast. Oh, yeah. I think I know who it is. Uh, before I say I want to add this, I looked up after you said Fight Night 61, I looked it up and it was the night that Frankie Signs beat Yuri Alcantara. I knew which event it was, I just didn't know the name. That's but impressive. I think I think the first Canadian UFC champion was Carlos the Ronan Newton. Dude, you you even got the nickname. Dude, you're such a savage. This is unreal. This is unfreaking real. Okay. However, you were still on the board. He's on the board. Eric. You got another one. What category and what dollar figure would you like? Uh, you know, I'm not going to be good at these, but let's just do it. Let's do outside the UFC for 300. Okay. Right in the middle even? Okay. Outside the UFC for 300. Who was the longest reigning champion in Pride FC history? You actually probably will get this one. I don't know for sure. I'm going to I'm gonna say Igor Vovchanchin. I don't know. Mm, that is incorrect. Guru, would you like to steal the outside of the UFC category? What would you get? I mean, you might as well guess something. Is, is it not? I mean, Fedor? Could Fedor? Is it Fedor? That is or? a very, very good guess, but it is not Fedor. The, the answer, Vanderlei Silva. 
1,939 days, which I thought was fake, but I checked multiple sources and, it, and they all said that, which that doesn't seem real. But apparently he was the champion forever. So, wow. <laughs> Vanderlei Silva. Cool. Who knew? Who knew? That's a long <laughs> time, but he was. Uh, Guru, what is your selection and what category and what dollar figure? What the we do still have two thousand dollar questions left? Yeah, what thousand dollar questions do we have go. left? I gotta, I gotta catch up here. General and outside the UFC. Let's do general. General knowledge, it is. Let's pull that one up. That, that is right here. Okay, general knowledge one thousand. The UFC has canceled four events in the modern era. Name three of the four that have been canceled. Uh, balls. Um. Two. Was it like 257? 250? No, it was before that. 247? They skipped a random ass number in there. Then they skipped the Khabib one. Um, uh, then there was like a couple others in the double digits, right? <laughs> I, I don't so, fucking know. I mean, like. <laughs> there was one like, in the I'm double digits. Defense. Like they were announced and then they were canceled. Wait, what do you mean? You mean like the F fight? So no, like the whole event was just canceled. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm. Yeah, there was a okay. whole Khabib event that they totally skipped a number of, and there was the the the, the COVID's card that they skipped a number of, and then there was one of the teams where like they did half cards and then they skipped one. I don't fucking know the numbers. Eric's gonna okay. rattle them off. All right, we're gonna we're gonna go with that. Um, you, no no like official guesses. Okay. I mean, three or four would be really tough. That's why it's a two, thousand. Four, there, there was one in the two hundreds too, but uh, yeah, there was one two, in the two hundreds too. I will. I, okay, I'll give you a hint. There was one in the two hundreds too, which yeah. there's been quite a few two hundreds. So, Eric, would you like to steal this one? I, I have absolutely no idea. This is one of the areas, like when it comes to like actual events and numbers, I have no clue. I don't even have a guess. Don't even have a guess. Okay, this this is a really really tough one. To be fair. Um, we're going to go ahead and go to the answer. The answer is UFC 151, UFC 176, UFC Fight Night 97, yeah. and UFC 233 are all events that were actually announced, had cards for, and then and were canceled at, before the event happened. Yep. There we go. Yeah, I said there were a couple double-digit ones and one in the 200s there. So, you nailed it, brother. Close. You nailed I, it. Hey, there you go. I'll take them all. You, got, you, were, anyway. you, were, probably, you were closer than Eric, technically, because he just didn't have a guess at all. So we'll take it. There it is. Uh, Eric, it's like, it is it's like, it's like getting points for writing your name on the SATs, but getting like, <laughs> and that's what you did. And gosh right. darn it, you should be proud of yourself. I did it. I didn't. I didn't even <laughs> shit myself on the proud. process. That's too funny. All right, Eric, what are you looking at? Let's do record books three hundred. What was that? Let's do one for the record books for 300. Son of a gun. We're skipping a little bit. One sec. Am I back? Uh, you tell us. I think so. Oh, wait. No, maybe. Okay, I'm back. What'd you get? Oh, what was that? Let's do one for the record books. on my for... end. What, what, uh... Record books 300. <laughs> Record books for 300. Okay, I got you now. You guys can hear me good? Yep. Okay. Who holds the record for the longest win streak in UFC history and what was the record? I will give you a small hint on this one that it's kind of a trick question. I don't need one. But not entirely. Oh, just oh. Of... oh okay. I was going to say I don't, I don't need a hint, but now I'm wondering if I do. Who holds the record for the longest win streak in UFC history and what is the record? Well, I don't, I don't know. If there's, it, but if there's a trick answer, I don't know. But it's, it's Anderson Silva. I just Solo. emphasize that it says win streak. Oh, 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 Is yeah, yeah. Guess? Anderson Silva? Versus, versus unbeaten okay. streak. Nailed yeah, it. it's Anderson Silva with 16 fights. Yes. Yep, nailed it. Yeah, because John Jones technically has a longer unbeaten streak, yep. but he has a no contest to Daniel Cormier. Yep. So there you go. Uh, that was That was excellent. Yeah, you didn't even need that. That actually made it harder for you, I think. Yeah, um, <laughs> what's your next one, Eric? What do you, what do you got? What do you want? Uh, let's do record books. 400 record books four. All right. 
Who holds the record for the most takedowns landed in UFC history? That's GSP, and just to put a little icing on it, it's 90 takedowns. Jesus, you nailed it, dude. <laughs> Georges, you got it. All right, well, Eric, you're just steamrolling along. What do you got next? Might as well just do 500, same category. 500, same. Okay, who has the most UFC title fight losses in UFC history? Here we go. I don't know this one, but I'm going to guess Randy Couture. Son of a bitch, dude. You're so good. Really? That's unreal. Wow. Dude, like what? <laughs> How are you so good at this? I told you. I okay, <laughs> You're just slaughtering. This isn't even like this is brutal. This is like Benoit Saint-Denis versus Elizio Zaleski dos Santos at this point. <laughs> Okay, all right. Let's hit another one. What do you got? Uh, let's do belt lineage 300. Belt lineage for three. Belt lineage for three. Here we go. Who was the first person in the UFC to win a belt in two different divisions? Come on. Come That's on. kind of funny because I just said his it. name. I just said his name two seconds ago. I'm pretty sure it was Randy Couture. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dude, you're so good. That is actually really funny that that was Randy. that that was it. Like right there, nailed it. Randy Couture, Andy, light heavyweight, Andy, Andy, Andy. heavyweight. Damn. Unbelievable. All right. What do you got, Eric? Four? Okay, we're going for four. Belt lineage for four. How many times in UFC history has someone missed weight for a title, uh, for a title fight, resulting in the fight still taking place, but either not for the title or with only one competitor <clears throat> eligible to win the title? How many times? That's all we need to know. I really don't know, but let's <laughs> see. I'm just I'm gonna just gonna come up with a number. Uh, uh, the, the, the four. Let's see the number. Oh, geez, no, nope, it is definitely not four. Um, I had to double check what my number was. Guru, do you want to make a guess on this one? It's funny because my number was gonna be three, but based on your reaction, I'll go with nine. Nine. Oh, dude, that was actually pretty close, but it is not nine. The actual answer is seven times three of which were at middleweight though for just a funny little little deal seven i couldn't tell you all of them i don't think i don't know if i wrote them down i know travis luter was one of them against anderson silva i'm pretty sure you all, you all romero. romero obviously we all know about the uh islam versus charles um Correct. there was a couple others i think or no it wasn't it was uh charles versus uh Sorry, yeah, charles versus islam Gaethje. But either way, um, it was Gaethje. Gaethje, that's the one. That's the one it was. And then he, when he fought Islam, it was vacant. Um, but Guru, you are now up. You have a chance to come back here. There's still a thousand dollar question and a couple of five hundreds. What do you like? I'm gonna go with a thousand dollar question because yeah, if I don't brother. get it, it's probably outside the UFC. Out. Outside the UFC for, for a thousand. Name the fight with the largest weight discrepancy in MMA history. Who were the participants and what was the event? I will give you half credit if you can only get half. I don't know. Was it the first, was it that first fight ever in that UFC one? I have no idea. It was not the first fight ever in UFC one. Eric, what would, what would your guess be? I mean, I'm pretty sure it was when Manny Yarbrough fought in pride, but I can't, I can't remember. I can't remember who. Oh, in MMA uh, history. Yeah, MMA. The outside the UFC was the category. I, I'm yeah. gonna say, that I'm gonna say sense. Manny Yarbrough versus Minoa. I can't remember who he fought. I don't know. That's gonna be my guess. Mm. Yeah, it was that big sumo guy of Pride, right? Yeah. So Manuel Yarbrough was is correct that you got one fighter right. The other one was ta uh, Takasi, and it was at Pride three. Actually, I didn't even click the thing, but yeah, it was. It was a good. It was a valiant effort. You got half right. It was. It was. Yeah, that's, that little guy won, didn't he? Six hundred plus. I think he did. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but I think I um, that fight. And it's funny that it says six hundred plus, and I think it was because the scale they had only went up to six hundred pounds, and he maxed it out, and they just didn't. They couldn't go. They couldn't actually weigh him, which is that's really funny. But he did win, um, in a really boring, weird fight. Uh, Eric, I guess here you go. What do you got? 
Uh, I mean, Guru see. technically could, can lose if we want. To, we want to clear him real quick. We can. I mean, I, somebody has to throw in the towel for me at some point. I feel like it's. Uh, but it's, it's fun. Uh, we got to play it out. <laughs> it's uh, what was that? We can play it out for fun. Elbowed in the head by oh Jared Cannonier. It's Jared Cannonier <laughs> elbowing Derek Brunson in the head. Somebody has at least to you score. Qualify it. Yeah, I, I did throw one shot at some point. I decided to puss out and go for a hundred dollars just to get me on the board. <laughs> You know what? Give me you know what? Give me outside the UFC for a hundred, and then we'll call it call it a day. I'll throw one more. Okay. I'll throw one more right. spinning hammer fist before we get out of I'm here. I'm with that. We could do that. Let's do it. Let's let's give let's give Guru outside the UFC. Name one women's only MMA promotion. Invicta. Yeah. Oh yeah, done. Nailed it. Look at that. Guru gets one right. Yeah, Jules would have also counted. That would have been fine. Can, can I play the rest of the questions there you though? Go. You absolutely can. In fact, I was hoping you would want to do that. Yes, you can. I definitely. And Guru, you're welcome to, to stick around, but you we gotta go. Together. I definitely don't blame you. It is late. Let's play Let's as a it. team. Okay. Let's play as a team for the rest of it, Greg. All right, okay. Fine. Quickly, yeah. Let's run through them. The rest is a team. Here we go. Yeah, it, we're just gonna. Um, let's just start with general knowledge and, and work on. How's that sound? Yeah. Sit. General knowledge for two hundred. Who was the first Olympic gold medalist to compete in the UFC? Henry Cejudo. <laughs> no, it was somebody um, I, in one of those earlier ones. You're going to know it. I, I'm going to say it was Kevin Jackson, but I can't remember if he was a gold medalist or not. I'm going to say Kevin Jackson. It was a good try. It was Mark Schultz. Mark oh. Schultz was the correct answer. First gold medalist. Yep. Nice. Yep. You were right. It's uh, gold was the, the key factor there. Looking at number th- 300 for it. Who fought opposite Ronda Rousey at UFC 157 in the first ever women's uh, fight in the UFC? Oh, I should know that one. That was girl Rilla Liz Carmouche. Yeah, that one I didn't know. Dude, you nailed it. And it. What's funny is Liz Carmouche is still a champion for Bellator, or like she she would have been then, I guess, when the when the when it ended. Um, I'm gonna keep the scores as they are. You did get this one right, guys, but I'm going to put a record at the end of this. If we ever do this again, record of 4,000 for Eric is going to be the record. Yeah, please, Liz yeah, please don't. Is- please don't. Look- <laughs> <laughs> please don't. Well, hopefully we can have somebody challenge Eric down the road. because Nobody's going to ever this do good. this. This is this so is- much fun. You're going to uh, change the question types. It will never be like this ever again. <laughs> this is a, this it will is- never be like this ever again. You're absolutely correct. This is brutal. Uh, we're having my a first good time. Nice All right. Oh my god! All right, Let's I go. would definitely invite one. you back. You've been fun. What UFC event was the ten point must system introduced? Uh, six, four, four. It was not 19. it. It would have been way later than that, I think. The 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 unified rules came out in like 2000, 2001 around there. I'm gonna say UFC 32. UFC 37 and a half. Not quite. It was. There we go. We're back. Oh, I'm back. 21 was the answer. I'm going to let everything catch up for a second. There we go. We're getting back. I don't know. I think it's because I'm sharing screens that makes this tough, but it won't be for long. Um, anyway, moving right along. Let's, uh, let's do belt lineages first and we'll circle back to outside the UFC. I think that's going to be for Let's do belt lineage first. Belt lineage. Name two fighters who lost their UFC debut to then go on and win a UFC championship. This does not include interim championships. Who do you have? You just got to name two. There's more than two. Uh, yeah, that's really hard. Uh, Bisbing? No, Bisbing is probably isn't one of them because he won tough. Bisbing is not one. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. Uh, oh, uh, uh, Brock Lesnar would be one of them, right? Brock Lesnar is one. Yeah, There's yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let me think. This, yeah, this is. Uh, Just got to get one more. 
So we According get a to my list, there's four, there's four others outside of Brock Lesnar. Is that the hint? <laughs> that's the hint. That's a that's a good hint. Okay. Um, that's a terrible hint. Okay. 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 I mean, all of them are in the modern era. I mean, there's that. Um, let's see. What's another good hint? Um, Did Robert Whitaker lose his debut? No, he didn't lose till he lost to like. Okay, none of them are below featherweight. Uh, that Leon Edwards? I don't know. That's just a guess. No. Do you give up? You gonna go? I, I, don't, I don't know. Give me some. Give us some initials. Okay. Give us something here. Eddie? Oh, there we go. Eddie Alvarez. Oh, I was gonna say Max Holloway. Holloway. Eddie Alvarez. Max Holloway. Holloway. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, dude. Yeah, because Holloway lost short notice to Forty Eight. I knew that, and I didn't mm -hmm, say it. Mm -hmm. That was a brutal one. That was a brutal one. Okay, outside the UFC, this is actually a fun one that I don't think anybody's going to do well at, but it's going to be good. We're going to 200. Who is the MMA fighter with the most regulated MMA bouts on his or her record? JL. This is just all MMA. It's for sure Travis the Iron Man Fulton. That's a good guess. Close. It is not JLS. Travis Fulton. Dude, you nailed it. It is the Iron Man Travis Fulton, and he's actually a total scumbag. So, like, you know, there's that. Well, he's, he's, but he does he's have dead, a lot of so fights. It's, so we don't have to worry about it now. <laughs> he's definitely dead. And rightfully so. That guy was dirt. Absolute dirt. So he deserved right. it. Uh, I know you're not supposed to say that, but the guy was a creep. Look it up if you want to know. Uh, outside the UFC for 400, who was the founder and original owner of Bellator? Scott Coker, right? No, he used to. No, it's um, um, the original. What's his Oh, uh, Campbell, oh, oh. right? Campbell McLaurin. Feeling that isn't too? It, isn't it? Um, isn't it Bjorn Rebney? Or, or yes, it is Bjorn Rebney. It's yeah. absolutely Bjorn Rebney. Absolutely. Do you guys know? Absolutely. Do, you, do you guys know a fun fact about Bjorn? You know who Bjorn Rebney's dad is? No. Who is his dad? Do you know Mr. that Rebney? viral? The viral video from years ago where the guy is like in a Winnebago shooting a commercial. And he's like, these goddamn flies and whatever. And it was this super viral, funny video. That's Bjorn Rebney's dad. <laughs> no way. Yeah. <laughs> huh. Oh, speaking of viral video, before we before we get the last question and get off of here, this came up in my gym today, and we were talking about it. Okay. It's I, I need to find some young people to start a new TikTok challenge, right? The TikTok challenge. It's you have to get, you know, those like 64 ounce like big gulps you can get from like 7 Eleven. 7 Eleven. You have to Fill it with melted butter and drink it through a straw. And you have to do so before it solidifies. <laughs> Somebody has to try this. Is, I love butter, and I don't think I could do it. So Disgusting. that is the new TikTok challenge. To, do you also Somebody have to not die, or are you allowed to die and still win? <laughs> You're allowed to die as long as you finish it. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. That's uh, horrific. Okay, last question, and then we can say our goodbyes to everybody. Um Name three MMA promotions that hold slash held their fights in a ring rather than a cage, past or present. Just got to name three out of all of them. Pride. You got one. Uh, uh, Shuto Box. Shuto, nailed it too. Dude, you're killing this one. And um, Strike Force use a cage or a ring? Mm -hmm. They always use the they always use the cage strike okay. force. What's um, you thinking of? A one of those like, killing this. One of those rush probably one of those Russian ones. Okay, that like I mean Did a did affliction use a ring? I don't think so. I guess I didn't okay. even think about affliction, but I don't think so. I kind of forgot they existed. Oh, Ryzen. There you go. Dude, Guru, if you'd have picked this one, you would have had it, brother. <laughs> I was literally, you know, what's really, really funny. Before we end this question, before you open it, I was about to say this one should just be for all the marbles. It's actually really, dude, funny. dude, that would have been so funny. Yes. That would have been so funny. Really funny. Yeah, those were the answers that I came up with. I'm sure there might be another one or two, um, but that's what I came up with. Those was those six: Rise and Pride, Shuto, Deep, Pancrase, and M1. Uh, um, I'm gonna stop sharing the screen so I can.
chat with people without my stuff freaking out. There we go. We are back. Um, let's catch up on the chat, say hi to everybody and all that stuff, and then we can get on out of here. Um, okay, looks like Ryan Jordan plays trivia with his with his friends, and that's awesome because you know he was shouting some stuff out in here and uh, had a couple of good guesses. So that's really fun. We've had some fun folks in in the in the chat earlier on in the night. Kiwi Brew, you can never go wrong with Kiwi Brew. Putting the donation, keeping the lights on over here. Apparently, we got to get a few more donations if we're going to get the Wi-Fi right. But <laughs> you know, it is what it is. Um, everybody in the chat was awesome. It was so much fun uh, just getting to go through these questions. I actually had a blast doing this. We have like 52 people watching us do trivia, and uh, that's surprising to me, and I like it. So. Uh, let's go ahead and just like, if you guys have anything that you want to like shout out or anything you want to go through, um, let's, let's let, uh, Eric go first since he did, he did win. Um, Eric, is there anything that you want to put out there for, for the people? Yeah, this, I, well, I just want to say thanks to you and I want to say thanks to Greg. This was super fun. Thanks to anybody who's watching, you know, I used to be in the content creation space. I don't do it anymore, but if anybody has spots like this that don't require tape study and hours of preparation that would allow me to be on camera talking about MMA. I'm always game for that. So hit me up. I'm definitely going to hit you up for another trivia night. When I have somebody that thinks they're a worthy challenger, you are definitely coming back because that was a savage performance. I, I don't think you should. I don't think you should have a trivia night without Eric. Eric has to be a part of trivia night. I think as, as jeopardy champion, he has to stay on until he's dethroned. I think, That's that, fair. I think that until somebody can beat him, if that ever happens, which might be really tough based on that. No. 4, mm -hmm. Like you would have to be an absolute whiz. Uh, maybe, I don't know, Ryan Jordan in the chat. I don't know, man. Like maybe you, you were throwing some good stuff out there. If you want to do this, let me know, dude. If you think you could take on Eric in a trivia challenge or if you want to even just take a shot, Ryan Jordan, I would let you come on. Um, we don't know each other personally. Like we're not, we're not, we don't on a first name basis, but we sure can be brother. You can come on, you can do this thing. It'd be a blast. Um, that would be pretty fun. But it, otherwise, when we find somebody, Eric, you got to come on again and we're going to do this because that was really, really fun. Uh, Guru, what do you want to shout out? What do you want to What do you want to get out here? Well, I want to shout out you, Mr. 138. Thank you so much for having me on. Eric, pleasure to see you again, man. Always always good to chop it up with you, even if you're kicking my ass. Uh, guys, if, if you don't know, I do a show called Chronic Combat Conversations. You can follow us over on YouTube, over on uh, X, also known as Twitter. Uh, you can follow me, Guru Scouting MMA, on uh, – Twitter verdict, Instagram, Tapology, Picket, Bet MMA, literally everywhere. Uh, Chronic Combat goes live every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern. We break down every UFC card full for free with special guests. Uh, I've had both of these gentlemen on the show before. Uh, Was next there last week night? Go, yeah. Next week we go live with uh, Narco Cop, and uh, should be a good should be a good time for sure. So, and another funny, I want to just kind of point this out. We're in the back last night before the show starts, right? We were, we were, you know, in the, in the, like the, the, the pregame stage, we were talking and it was brought to my attention that my YouTube logo <laughs> looks <laughs> like a crazy Rose Nami Yunus. By my, and, uh, I brought it to your attention. <laughs> you sure did. And I don't like, I didn't know whether to feel insulted. I didn't know, know whether to feel bad for Rose Nami Yunus. I didn't, I didn't know how to feel about this. But it was possibly the funniest thing anyone's ever said to me. <laughs> it was hilarious. So if, if you're watching in the chat and you want to know, please, somebody put together like the closest image of Rose Nami Yunus's face and my logo like side by side and like tweet that to me because I think that would be hilarious. Um, but also, Very if you close. haven't watched our stream last night from, from Chronic Combat Conversations, you need to go back and watch it. I was there. We were having a good time. It was it was delightful. I had to had to tell TB how to make nicknames because the dude couldn't get it done. So, <laughs> it's, 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 yeah. so if you want to if you want to hear Legend. some good nicknames, you know it is what it is. It was a good time last night, and so everybody should go watch that. Um, get that to like a thousand plus views today, guys. Let's do oh, it. Yeah. Um, but with that, thank everyone so much for joining all the the chat. The combatants, the contestants, if you will. Combatants, contestants, you guys are the same. Uh, with that, we're going to end the stream. So thank you, everyone, and we will catch you all down the road. Thanks, everybody.